And that DNA is throughout your body. And I believe the body of Christ has a DNA. And I believe that we all share this DNA because we are all cells in one body with one head. And so it's a universal DNA that we're looking for. And in my search of the scriptures, my discussion with much wiser men than I, I've I've come to what I believe to be the DNA of the church. It's uh, three things. Divine truth, nurturing relationships, apostolic mission. I know it's from God. It actually spells, I don't know if you notice this, but it spells DNA. (laughs) Must be from God. In English. And we all know God speaks English. And that's all? No, he speaks every language. So DNA, divine truth, nurturing relationships, apostolic mission. What I mean by divine truth is where heaven connects with earth. Where where divine connects with humanity. Bridges the gulf between God and man. And sheds light on who we are and who he is and what it's all about. That's what it is. So it involves, every bridge involves two land masses, right? Two sides of the river. In essence, divine truth must involve both banks of the river. God, divine, human. The other side. And so, divine truth, the scriptures are divine truth, right? Who wrote the Bible? The Holy Spirit and man. And yet, it was uh, without errors in its original writings. And it sheds light on who we are and who God is. And it becomes for us the truth. The transforming truth of God. That's divine truth. Jesus is divine truth. Is He a revelation? Does He reveal who God is? You've seen the Father. You've seen me. You've seen the Father, He says. Does He reveal who man is? Yeah, He is our representation. He is the Son of Man and the Son of God. And He sheds light on, on who we are, who God is, and He's without blemish. And he's a revelation. This is divine truth. We must have this in every cell of the body. The presence of Christ is the key. Secondly is the nurturing relationships. It's all the one another's in the Bible. How many verses mention the words one another in the New Testament? Can you think of some? What are we commanded to do one to another? Love. Encourage. Serve. Honor. Inspire. To stimulate love and good deeds. I like the word inspire better. What else? Yeah, there's so many of them. Uh, Give preference, confess your sins one to another, uh, uh, bear one another's burdens. I mean, it's throughout the New Testament. This is what church is. It's one another, together. And that's the important part, the nurturing relationships. They're building us up. They're causing us to be healthy. And thirdly is apostolic mission. By apostolic, I mean a sent one. The church is not a sending agency, it's a sent agency. We are to live sent. As the Father has sent me, Jesus said, so send I you. You are sent ones. We are apostolically oriented. We are one holy apostolic church, as the creed says. And so a lot of churches have the DNA. They have the divine truth, nurturing relationship, and attractional mission. (laughs) But see, I think it's meant to be apostolic mission, that we are meant to be going, not waiting for them to come to us. Um, So if DNA is so important, why didn't Jesus mention it? There's no mention in the New Testament of DNA, is there? Well, that's because it hadn't been discovered yet. So even if Jesus did know what it was, if he talked about it, no one would understand. But he did mention what DNA truly is. He mentioned uh, the divine truth, nurturing relationships, the apostolic mission. What's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's our connection with divine truth. What is the second greatest commandment? Love your neighbor as yourself. And what's the Great Commission? Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. I think he not only said it, he underlined it, highlighted it, and even printed it in red so you won't miss it. (laughs) It's throughout the New Testament. Whenever Paul talks about faith, hope, and love, he's talking about our response to truth, that's the faith, our response to relationship, that's the love, our response to mission, that's the hope. It's the core of who we are. Now, when it comes to DNA, we don't want to be responsible for irresponsible genetic engineering. Don't supplement the DNA. Don't add something to it. Jesus meant it this way. He did not say all these commandments are fulfilled in these five. (laughs) These 
two, the great one and the second greatest, fulfill it all. And then he added the Great Commission. Uh, don't subtract to the DNA. Don't take anything from it. If you add a single chromosome to the human DNA, it results in Down syndrome. If you take one away, it's even worse. Don't add or take anything from the DNA. Uh, some churches, quite frankly, they have divine truth, nurturing relationships, and they really need a kick in the A. Apostolic mission is what they're missing. What did you think I meant? And don't separate the DNA. This is our greatest crime. We hire a staff pastor for truth and another one for relationship and a missions pastor. And their responsibility is that part of the church. We have committees for each one. We have the, the missions committee, the uh, fellowship committee, and we have, well, we actually just have the senior pastor for truth. Is that not true? <laughs> yeah. And so we, no pastor wants a committee to check up on their sermons. So what happens is we've taken the DNA and unraveled it to its component parts. And it loses all of its effectiveness. The truth informs the relationships. The relationships inform the mission. The mission uh, makes truth more relevant and understood. And, and, it, and it's a, it, it circulates in both directions. And they, they're all needed together at once. When you separate them, it loses all the power.